Dear learners, I welcome you all in the DLED program of NIOS. I, Dr. Neera Gautam, will discuss with you a very important topic, topic number 32 of course code 509. The title of this topic is Learning Resources for Social Sciences Need and Type. Before going on to the topic in detail, I am here to focus upon the main theme of this discussion. These are definition of learning resources, what learning resources include, need and significance of learning resources, types of learning resources, criteria for selection of learning resources and in the last I will arrive at conclusion. Learners, we all know that in the present educational system, there had been a tremendous change with regard to the classroom teaching. In classroom teaching, teacher is the key person who manages all the affairs related to learning of the students. But nowadays, teacher is no more the expert of the subject. Rather, he has become a facilitator of learning. You can say that a teacher is responsible for making the learner learn. National Curriculum Framework 2005 also proposes that the learning should be child centered and activity dominated. In this context, we can say that Whatever learning is possible in the classroom, we have to focus upon the learning environment. And the learning environment can be made effective with the help of the learning resources. Now the question arises, what does the term learning resources stand for? Learning resources are the material used by the classroom teacher so to supplement instruction or stimulate the interest of the learner. In other words, we can say that learning resources are the tools or are the devices which arouses the interest of the learner, which makes the learning possible in the classroom or which is related to the learning outcome. The learning resource include the learning situation as well as learning material. We can also say that the learning resources are all kinds of the learning opportunities which are either existing in the classroom or which are produced or created by the teacher to facilitate the learning outcomes. For example, a person can be a learning resource. If a school invites a doctor to deliver the lectures upon an important issue like health and sanitation, here the lesson given by the doctor is a benefit to the learners in the school. The doctor is a learning resource. A place can be a learning resource. You can take your children to a museum. In a museum, the children can see the historical, the pictures of historical moment, monuments, past evidences, replicas and any other thing which is related to history. Even the discoveries of science and technology are kept in museum also. The children come across vivid experiences. Going to museum is also a learning resource. When you take your children to the marketplace or grocery shop, they can have experience about the purchase of goods and services. They can know how the prices are determined. They can know the interactions which take place between the buyers and the sellers. In this way, the market or the grocery shop can be a learning resource. Now we come to the next that is 
what learning resources include. We can see learning resources include textbook, it may be printed or digital, workbooks, worksheets, manipulatives, blocks and beads. The blocks can be used for the counting purposes, flashcards, educator workshop, non-fiction books, posters, educational games, apps, websites, software, online courses, activity books, graphics, novels, reference books, DVDs, CDs, magazines and periodicals, student guide, teacher guide, labs, models, movies and television. The next thing which I would like to share with you that what is the need or significance of learning resources. In other words, what is the contribution of the learning resources in classroom teaching? The first deals with the direct experiences to the learners. There is a Chinese proverb, I hear, I forget, I see, I remember, I do, I understand. This proverb emphasizes upon the role of the learning environment. When learning resources are brought into the classroom, the learner makes uses of more than one sense. He can touch the learning resource, he can play with it or he can feel with it, he can see the learning resource, he can smell it. It means the learning resources provide direct experiences to the learner. The second one is about clarification of the content. There are so many concepts or subject matter which are written in the book, but their language is so vague that it is very difficult for the learner to derive any meaning out of it. But when the teacher uses the learning resource, it makes an image in the mind of the learner and there occurs a clarification of the content. It means the content becomes very easy for the learner. The third one is longer retention of information. We all know that forgetting is an integral part of our memory or forgetting is the tendency of all the human beings across the world. Psychological tests have already proved that whatever we learn, we forget 85 percent of it within a night. In this situation, learning resources are the boon. When we bring the learning resources in the classroom, Anything which has been taught in the classroom, it can be saved in our memory or brain box for a longer time. The next one is organizing classroom teaching. In a classroom teaching, a teacher has to go through the various process like introducing the topic, presentation of the topic, recapitulation and evaluation. In all the stages, a teacher makes use of the learning resources. For example, if a teacher in history has to teach an important topic of history, revolt of 1857, for introducing the topic, he can make use of pictures of the historical figures like Rani Lakshmi Bai, Tatya Tope, Nana Faranwis, Veer Kumar Singh, etc. Moreover, for elaborating the points, he can make use of the map of India to show which way the places influenced or affected during the revolt of 1857. Next one is learning resources facilitate holistic learning. The term holistic means that it covers cognitive, affective and psychomotor domain of a person. Suppose a teacher has to teach the topic in history titled Ashoka the Great. 
in order to elaborate the topic he has to focus upon the birth of ashoka the wars he has fought or the battles he has fought his rivalries his religious policies his extensive uh, extension of empire and like that while making this topic simple or your teacher can make use of a tree figure or a data chart about the ashoka making a data chart maps and diagrams facilitate in holistic learning next one the contribution which is made by the learning resources it learning resources make learning enjoyable when a teacher is infusing the ready made tidbits of the knowledge into the minds of the learner it may make the learning filled with various kinds of the dullness and boredom but when the teacher is making use of the illustrations examples maps charts diagrams the learning resources are capable enough to make the learning enjoyable or playful learners now we talk, talk about the types of the learning resources the learning resources are categorized into the various types and important among them are print based resources these include textbook reference books and manuals periodicals magazines and journals collections such as newspaper cutting photographs diagrams and graphs after that non print best resources it includes human voices audio tapes disc gramophone records radio broadcasts slide film strip ohp microfilms globe puppet models mockups etc a very important type of the learning resources is classroom itself as albert einstein has said i never teach my people i only attempt to provide the conditions in which they learn we can say that classroom is itself a learning resource and it depends upon the readiness of the teacher or competence of the teacher to make it a learning resource now a question arises what a teacher should do to make a classroom a learning resource the first one establish good rapport with the learners in a classroom the learners are coming from divergent socio economic backgrounds therefore they are having divergent needs and aspirations a teacher has to treat all the learners in a friendly manner a teacher should call the learners by their names moreover he should try his best to know the background of the learners if a teacher calls the learners by their names they will feel attachment or there develops a intimacy between the teacher and the learner the teacher should not use any kind of the derogatory remarks like can't you do this you cannot do this don't you know this this kind of the remarks fill the learners with a sense of fear and disappointment therefore it is mandatory to establish a good rapport with the learners the second one is about proper use of chalk and blackboard chalk and blackboard are the traditional methods which are used for presenting anything on the blackboard related to teaching and learning or related to the content a teacher should make use of the chalk and block blackboard in a judicious manner he can write down the important points on the blackboard he can make some diagrams charts or any figure which is relevant to the content use of the colorful chalk is also mandatory 
to underline the important points. While using the colorful chalk, a teacher may draw the attention of the learners towards the blackboard. Next one is make the learners know why they are going to study a particular topic. Here the question arises why? Why means the learner should be aware about the purpose of that particular content or the learner should be intimated about the objectives of their learning or what kind of the behavioral changes are to be brought at the end of the instruction. Next one is use of the soft skills as humor and storytelling. Teaching is not merely the sharing of the information. It is more than that. It is change in the behavior or you can say that behavior modification, inculcation of the values, development of the skills and so on. In order to facilitate learning in the classroom, a teacher should use soft skills, humor, storytelling or recitation of the poem. For example, if a teacher has to teach a very important chapter in history 1857 revolt, he can start this chapter with the use of or he can give the reference of the poem of Subhadra Kumari Chauhan that is Chamak Uthi San Santavan Me Vah Talwar Purani Thi Khub Ladi Mardani Vatav Jhansi Wali Rani Thi. This poem is very attractive and this poem has some lesson behind or it, this poem has a reference to revolt of 1857. Next one is about the proper use of the stimulus variation. Stimulus variation is related to the changes in voice modulation, movements, gestures, body language, pause, which make a learner to answer, etc. A teacher should also make use of the stimulus variation in a proper manner. If he is changing his movements and gestures time to time, the learners will realize that the teacher is controlling the class or a teacher should have eye to eye contact with every learner. Every learner should feel that the teacher is staring or teacher he is paying attention to me. Next one, provide situation that gives learner an acceptable challenge. There are many chapters or many lessons in a subject which are little bit difficult or it poses a very difficult task for the learner. When the learner completes that task, he feels that I have done it, I have achieved it or it gives him a sense of success. Therefore, it is the duty of the teacher to provide some task which are challenging in nature for the learner. Next is about the seating arrangement in the classroom or you can say the physical facilities which are available in the classroom. The seats which are av already available in the classroom should be comfortable one and moreover the seats should be arranged in a proper manner. Last one is about the proper light and ventilation in the classroom. Proper light is also very necessary condition for learning to occur. The temperature of the classroom should be moderate. It should neither be too hot nor be too cold. The temperature of the classroom should be adjusted according to the weather conditions. Next kind of learning resource is community resources. After family, community is a place which plays an important role in the education of the children. Community is itself a school where children learn about the history, about the natural environment, about the cultural practices, about the societal norms. It is the community which is helpful in inculcating all the values of human life such as tolerance, empathy, sympathy, fraternity, interdependence, etc. It is the duty of the teacher 
to bring the community nearer to the school or to bring the school nearer to the community. It is the duty of the teacher to minimize the gap between the two. Now the question arises, how the community resources can be utilized? For example, the people related with the various professions like medicine, teaching, mathematics, science and technology, business, they may be invited to the school to deliver the lectures on the area of their interest. Even the students can be helped to take part in various community services like plantation, environmental protection, sanitation, campaign for the child rights, campaign against the dory system, campaign against the women exploitation and so on. The students can take part as a volunteers in various kinds of, of the community services also. Here the question is the types of the community resources. There are various types of the community resources which a teacher can use in the classroom as a learning resource. These are resources of geographical interest such as hills, valleys, dams, rivers, seaports, etc. Resources of historical interest such as forts, pillars, monuments, excavations, caves, etc. Resources of cultural interest such as museums, art galleries, universities, film studios, zoo, etc. Resources of economic interest such as marketplaces, banks, mills and factories, railway junctions, post and telegraph exchanges, etc. Resources of scientific interest such as scientific laboratories, broadcasting stations, thermal and hydropower generating stations, etc. The last category of the learning resource is digital learning resources. These learning resources are often made of different digital media which includes text, videos, images and sound and some of them are text, online articles, websites, ebooks, manuals, reports, graphics, photos, paintings, cartoons, illustrations, audio, podcast, video, online videos on the web, institutionally produced videos, animations, animated dem demos, processes, simulation, virtual world. Criteria for selection of learning resources. For selecting the learning resources, age of the learner is very important. Learning resource does not meet the age of the learner. It will fail to accomplish the task. The second one, low cost material. Learning resources should be made of the material which are very cheap or the material which a learner can afford. The learning resources should be easy to use or easy to handle. Moreover, they should be portable. It means that they can be shifted from one place to another place. Able to meet the requirements of the curriculum. Curriculum involves all kinds of the experiences and the learning resources should cater to the curricular needs also. Coverage of all kinds of the domains. The learning resources should touch upon the cognitive, affective and psychomotor domain of the learner. Flexibility, it means that the learning resources should be such that the teacher should be capable enough to use wherever the situation requires. Interdisciplinary connections, it refers to the thing that the learning resources should have bearing upon the various subjects or in a broader context the learning resources should be touching the real world. Now I conclude this discussion. Learner participation in the learning process is an important aspect of the classroom teaching. 
it can be ensured by use of the learning resources. Learning resources are the material which a teacher uses to facilitate learning, understanding and acquisition of the skills by the learner. There are various types of learning resources, print based, non print based, classroom as a resource, community resource, digital resources. But it depends upon the expertise of the teacher to identify these resources and make use of them in the classroom to make the learning meaningful and enjoyable. This is all about learning resources, need and type. Thank you learner, thank you very much.